Good morning, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Okay. So, the video and audio are good today. Let us hope. Uh, yeah, right, now will... it is good. right now it is good, but we don't know. How so, just uh, we are waiting for the participants to join. Okay. We can start. No problem. So you received all the reprint of the papers and all that? Yeah, I have received. I have received. Okay. And so, uh, meanwhile, I do. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. You are saying something. Yeah. So I request uh, whoever has joined, they can ask the doubts or they can have the questions with the sir and uh, have some discussion. Yeah. So all the participants are open to have the discussion. Yeah, no problem. And uh, we have uh, uh, whatever uh, sort of uh, research material is available, I am yeah. trying to disseminate. Of course, the rest of it from the references also they can collect. Okay. Uh, uh, I will share everything with the participants. So, yeah. So, so that in future they can use or they can go through that and yeah, they can. Use and ultimately, you know, we want. Uh, uh, your vice chancellor and all your faculty members and the uh, students and the scholars uh, right. to take up these type of ideas and implement in your university. Right, uh, sir. Right. The library or anywhere else. Uh, because today we are talking about a nice car parking application, which okay. uh, the student group will be very much interested uh, to take it up and see how it is. Of course, in my passing remark, uh, I will try to give some other new uh, ideas, uh, you know, because after all, uh, we have all young minds, you know, oh, yes, yes. wanting to look into new research ideas. Like yesterday, I've given, you know, when we have persons buried beneath the debris in a train right. accident, how well uh, if, uh, if they could only have a small tag attached on their hand or anywhere right. through a small uh, mobile phone, we can easily sort of spot them out. Right, sir. Uh, then, of course, now today's technique we are trying to use uh, to do. So these are new innovations which are coming forth. Okay. So thinking and mind is always uh, new only never becomes old. <laughs> so that is the, that is the so thing. We, we become young, you know, when we address uh, uh, new things students uh, uh, on this type of occasion. So how is the COVID situation at Pondicherry, sir? Uh, it was very much under control because it is a very small UT, just about 12 lakhs population. But okay. floating population, especially from Chennai, uh, they have worsened the situation because otherwise our chief minister had it under very good control. Okay. With our lieutenant governor, uh, uh, madam, who is uh, basically a police lady, you know, <laughs> the way she will control okay. uh, it. was very well controlled, but because of this small infiltration, uh, influx rather, I would say, uh, it started increasing. Now it is under control, much better control. You have a center of excellence in your university, Professor? Your uh, yeah, it was, earlier it was there, but the tenure was over now. So. Okay. So again, again, and our university is, uh, we can say, some 23 years old. Oh, okay, okay. So earlier, uh, this uh, college was Government Engineering College, Gopal okay. Government College, and then it has been taken by the university. So now it is... Oh, okay. University Institute Something of Something like what 
you have enabled just now. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Understood. Before I retired, I enabled that. Yes, definitely. Yes. Definitely. Took so much yes. time. We are having around 250 colleges affiliated with the university. Okay. So in Madhya Pradesh, uh, this is the only university for the technical and uh, professional courses. Government. Right? So I had a other... chance to visit Bhopal under an e-governance conference, and uh, I was so fascinated by your legs. Right, right, right. jaga hai sir. acha. Yeah, uh, it's so nice, you know. Uh, always, uh, of course, if this COVID was not there, I would have come there personally <laughs> to right. participate. But anyway, I will look at the because Gopal is such a lovely uh, city, and uh, and people are also so nice, you know. <laughs> we had a very big e-governance conference, and your chief minister was Mr. Chauhan at that time. So, he, he still he is only still alive. Very, very dynamic it was from the government. Right. right. I was director IT at that time and okay. they had sent me to participate. So, okay. I used to remember that place very much. So, your center of excellence was basically in which area? Was it in? Uh, it, it was in IT. IT. Okay. Yeah. Are you doing something in security area, information security? Yeah, right, right. It is uh, the IT. IT department is uh, looking into that, and they are doing very public uh, campaign and uh, awareness programs and like that. So, anybody working on uh, chaotic cryptography? Chaos using chaos theory. Anybody working? Uh, that's sir. I have to discuss with the faculties uh, because I am from the electronics. So I, I, I had initiated a project with the Department of Electronics in New Delhi, okay. and we have published some papers in chaotic cryptography. Okay, right, right, sir. So I will I will discuss and then uh, if anyone interested, I will. Uh, Give your detail and uh, ask them to. Sure, we will try to take. Yes, sir. Yes. So now already some 40 plus participants have joined. So yeah. I request all the participants uh, to have the discussion or to ask something with the sir or uh, any doubt. If it is there, they can clear it. Yeah. But we will start with our lecture and then take it at the end. Those questions, oh. or you want us to? Okay, okay, no problem, no problem. We will our lecture and then we will start. Okay, okay, okay. Because we are coming fresh and yeah. uh, they get an opportunity to look at. So, can you have the real time presentation put on the thing? And uh, anyway, uh, first let us have your opening remarks and then. Yeah, yeah, good morning, Paul, and uh, again, welcome to Professor Patruraj. And yesterday we had very good sessions on. Uh, time uh, arrival thing and uh, how we can find and how we can communicate between the home automation and other things. So in the same sequence, again, sir is delivering on the real time uh, identification or other things. So I will put the slides on and then give to the sir. Thank you, sir, and thank you, everyone. So we will start the presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. 
I have put the first one, real time guidance. Yes, yes. A moment, it is over. We'll go to the second one. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. So you can continue, sir. It is available now. It is ready. Yeah. Uh, so uh, a very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, research scholars, students, and all participants from Rajiv Gandhi University at Bhopal. Uh, it's my great pleasure to continue this uh, presentation on the second day. And what I'm go just going to present to you is a couple of PPT slides which are going to practically demonstrate to you on an idea which we had coined yesterday on the ability to do real-time guidance in a museum. So I want you to look at a scenario which we are trying to look at here. You have a tourist who has come to see a museum. Now this museum is consisting of several floors, like uh, the typical example was the one at Louvre Museum in Paris, which is almost five to six floors, and it takes quite a large number of time. So since a lot of time, the tourist would like to quickly go to his particular artifact or painting or whatever is interest of interest to him. Okay, so he would like to particularly. So, when he is interested to do that, we are now trying to find out a mechanism or a means by which we can facilitate this type of operation inside the museum. So, today's first presentation is all about that and how it is enabled. And I'm very happy to tell you that uh, uh, we had implemented this system for the museum in Pondicherry. And uh, this was way back in 2006 when this idea was proposed to them. So today, uh, uh, we could, uh, I would request uh, the students and scholars from Rajiv Gandhi University to take up this idea and implement in its own way, in, in a much more improved way, which is possible with the present day gadgets and electronic devices and tools and uh, the processes which are already. On that note, I would now go about trying to do this first presentation. Now the first slide, please. Yes, sir, I have put two. Uh, it has not come. Slide has not come. Is it visible to other participants? Yes, sir. Sir, it is there. It is there. It's not coming on my screen, sir. This is from Google Drive. No, sir. Hello. What is it? What is it? No, sure. Participants, whether slides are visible or not? Not, sir. Not? Open that, sir, light, sir. Okay, I will say it again. 
ओके सर नाउ इट इज ओपन वन सेकेंड सर now no sir so you are it is just still it, it is just still that open slide reopen that slide sir No, I have not got the no, first slide is not coming for me. now it is there sir no hello no no it does not come sir it does not come let let it प्रोफेसर शर्मा हा यस प्रोफेसर शर्मा इट एस कम प्रोफेसर Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, it has come. So it is visible. Visible to others also. Ah, uh, what is visible? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Uh, all yes, the sir. participants, it is visible for them. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, okay. Okay. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Uh, now I will proceed to give the PPT presentation. Uh, for that research paper which has already been uh, circulated amongst you and on the based on the discussion we had yesterday where i have given you all the theoretical background and here we look at a situation where we have implemented this and uh, we look at uh, young students and scholars from your university to take this forward to implement especially within your university at several places wherever possible and also into the state museum and the other places so the title is real time guidance using bluetooth technology for indoor navigation and this was uh, performed along with my btech students way back in 2005 6 okay and that is when uh, subsequently we have published this work now go to the next slide please yeah so the problem definition is uh, you see as i was telling you uh, we have a tourist who has come to a museum and he wants to quickly go through the particular painting or an artifact of his interest but since the museum is such a large edifice and it becomes so difficult for him to uh, sort of traverse so many floors and then 
zoom on to that particular painting or artifact. So suppose he is having, with the help of a, a personal digital assistant, of course, today we are all having, uh, we say, like a magic wand which is there with us is the mobile phone. So using that on which we can incorporate all these ideas which is being put forth. So we could use it to guide a user to the desired destination. And of course, here we've used the PDA example. Next slide, please. So the solution is attempted uh, under these three heads. First is the development of a location identification system. And then after we have done that, we then proceed to the development of an algorithm for finding the required path because you'll have to traverse within the museum to go the, uh, to the required destination. And then, of course, integration of the results from the above onto a virtual map, which would enable you to traverse through this territory. Next slide. Yes. So this particular block diagram will give you a very clear idea as to how we go about trying to implement this entire idea. So what we do is uh, on the left side, we have all details regarding the sensor, the location sensor, the location information service. And then from there, we are getting into the context aware indoor mobile navigation application. On the right side, we have the floor plans and the spatial information service. And then it gets to access the context aware navigation application. So what is important is this particular idea uh, of the floor plan of the museum and all its spatial information has to be obtained a priori before we can implement this. So based on that is how this is being taken. And you could see how it is uh, sort of put into the overall block. Next slide. Yeah. So then we try to list out the complexities involved and what are the solutions. First is, please remember, whenever we take up uh, this type of a solution, uh, we must see the privacy of the particular individual or the organization or all that is not eroded. So the user privacy is very much kept up and the solution we have used here is a passive architecture which is sort of, uh, sort of terminates along with the system there itself. Then we have the administrative overhead and the traffic management. So here we try to use a solution which is on the decentralized administration. Then fourth is the energy efficiency. So here we uh, take recourse to uh, trying to use the Bluetooth device, which incidentally is a low power consuming device and quite uh, sort of uh, robust for this type of an application. And the last one, which especially in indoor uh, type of situation, we are always going to encounter noise and interference and multi-path effects. This is something which is prevalent in the indoor situation. And we try to use a predictive filter. Uh, we implement that by which we overcome. Next slide, please. So now Bluetooth for indoor navigation uses RF because of its high availability and the access point density can be low. And we find Bluetooth is ubiquitous and it's also a low power technology. And lastly, it has multifunctional communication standard. So we could use, exploit it for various applications depending on the necessity. Next slide. So the localization techniques uh, with which we have already been familiar from yesterday's discussion are the following as uh, we have talked enough on these. Of course, uh, we would again try to look at a triangulation technique and we will not be opting for the two advanced systems here. We have taken the very basic system, which I'll be showing the next slide. Uh, that means we are not taking up the time of arrival and time difference of arrival, which have been discussed, the angle of arrival in yesterday's lecture. 
but instead we go to the next slide which will describe that yeah so we take up uh, a, a technique called rssi acronym standing for received signal strength indicator so the why we opted for that is a very simple system because initially because we wanted to progress to the complicated system via this simple uh, essay because we got this idea and then we wanted to see uh, the proof of pudding will be there whether we can implement and we can study it effectively and we can implement this in a museum type of situation and if it is showing good fruits then we can migrate to the advanced systems so use of rssi necessitates uh, uh, rather relatively sparse antenna requirements and you have no modifications to either do on the antenna or the tags that is basically uh, the rf points the access points okay so you don't have to do any modifications like we had the toa or the other systems and above all we will be looking at the accuracy figures it provides reasonable accuracy for our type of application which we will see from the simulated results which we have obtained next slide please so this is regarding the log distance model for estimating the position we are very familiar with this type of equation which we have encountered in wireless technology especially starting from freeze transmission formula and all that advancements so this is a very simple type of depiction and of course the important point is n is the path loss slope factor which typically has values between 2 and 5 depending on depending on the indoor type of thing if we are we are in an outdoor type of situation then we are having a much more comfortable uh, square law type of uh, uh, reason where n takes the order of 2 but in an indoor environment n, uh, n increases from between 2 to 2 part between the values from 2 to 5 and it could go somewhere from 2.5 to even 3 or 3.5 depending on uh, the particular indoor situation what it is surrounded with next slide please so now uh, a very elegant way which we do is uh, we have uh, our pda uh, which is uh, the device under test and we want to access all the relative uh, re uh, all the relevant information from the three access points because this particular investigation is being done in two dimension it necessitates three access points which you will see right now in the subsequent slides from where what we are doing is we are now using a mechanism by which we are able to convert from rss side to distance that means the distance between the mobile unit and an access point can be inferred from the received signal strength indicator okay and for those of you because you have your mobile you can also see what is uh, the particular received signal strength in your mobile from a particular pts so in a similar way we use this rssi uh, type of indication and using this equation the rssi received at the mobile unit from the access point with coordinates a i b at the time n is given by this general definition here which we see here more details in the subsequent slides next slide please yeah so now this gives us the overall flow chart for the proposed architecture so very important as it's a passive system we have the access points always under transmission mode and we have located those three access points very judiciously inside the museum environment so what we do is first we listen for signals from the access points and then extract the rssi value and access point ids from the api access point indicator then calculate the user position from the rssi and then we do the estimation of distance to three nearest access points using Kalman filter about which we have discussed in detail yesterday. 
then we use this technique called triangulation, which we will be illustrating the subsequent side. And triangulate user's position and then display the estimated position. Okay, so this is a simple flow chart which can easily be adopted and we request all our young students to embark on this very simple project to do this implementation. Next slide, please. Yes, right. So uh, A, B, C indicate the three access points which have been very judiciously located inside the museum environment, in a particular room where it is required and where we have got different artifacts or uh, different type of pictures or paintings or whatever they are put. Uh, we have taken a very generic situation and what is very important for you to notice is that uh, the three big circles here we are showing they are intersecting at one single point. This is not necessarily so as I told you yesterday. Instead, what would be more generic is they would intersect at a region. To simplify, we have taken a very simple case and you could see the distance between the access point and the PDA from each one of them, which are identified by PSA, SP, and the long distance model for the distance estimation is given here, which we see here. Okay, we go to the next slide. So, and uh, we then try to look at the verification of the triangulation algorithm, and this is how all these uh, uh, equations are being, and the coordinates, and all that are being uh, typically put out. Next slide. Yes, and then the mathematical model of the system, the linearization of the system, how it is identified from xk plus 1 to xk and wk, weight age, yk, and then we have the matrix representation with the transpose here, and from which we are able to get these values. Next slide. And then we then go on to identifying this with the Kalman estimator uh, with which we had discussed yesterday and depending on the access point and its uh, particular uh, characterization we identify the various parameters from which then we now go to next slide yeah so we now take up uh, the based on this uh, technique and the algorithm which has been proposed, we are able to first take up the first set of measurements which are there using RSSI. And you could see basically indicating first is of course the true uh, uh, result. Then we have the measured result and then using Kalman filter, the estimation results. Okay, because it is in, in an indoor environment, and uh, because uh, we are able to do that measurement using the RSSI technique. And you could see how these graphs, when they are superimposed, you will get a much better idea. But the observation intervals which we have taken right now is 100 seconds, and the sampling interval is two seconds. Now we will judiciously use uh, the techniques by which we would change the observation interval and the sampling intervals and see because ultimately what is our desired requirement is to estimate the target position very very accurately okay and then from which we can then utilize that to traverse whichever area we want from that starting point next slide please yes so here is a blown up view and you can see the position error okay that is basically between the measurement and estimation okay uh, so uh, so we could see how much is the undulation which you have um, and the measurement uh, results uh, to what extent they are uh, in error compared to the first type of estimation which we have done for a sampling interval of two seconds right 
under uh, overall observation interval of 100 seconds. Okay. Now we go to the next uh, uh, investigation. Next slide, please. Yeah. So here what we have done is the observation interval has been retained at 100 seconds, but the sampling interval has been halved and you have made it one second and you could see the improvement which has occurred in the overall uh, sort of uh, progress uh, between measured and estimation towards trying to reach the true position and you could see how the graphs compare. We'll go to the next slide which will show us in a much broader perspective what it is. Yeah, so you could see because of the sampling interval reduction, you could see the uh, estimation results coming much more closer to the uh, true result and the position error also, uh, the, the measurement error also reducing compared to the earlier result. Next slide please. Okay, so now we have gone to almost one tenth of it, a sampling interval. So you see the magic behind it, observation interval is same, but moment we reduce the sampling interval, you could see automatically how much the errors have reduced. So this is something, you know, in our power, depending on the computing capability which we have in our device, whether it is a PDA or a mobile phone or a tablet, whatever it is, whatever type of uh, uh, sort of uh, contrivance, uh, uh, whatever type of uh, aids which we have to sort of uh, maneuver within the museum premises. And you could see the improvement. Yes, next slide please. And you could see more and more uh, the estimated results trying to converge towards the true position and the measurement error has come down. You know, Big way also. Next slide. So what we have done now is, uh, after having looked at all this, the best way we try to compare is put them in a tabular column, and we will see uh, over a time period of 100 seconds, and the sampling interval when it is starting at two seconds then it is half to one second then it goes to 0.1 second and you could see the measured error and the estimated error minimum maximum as you translate i will take uh, the minimum as about uh, uh, 0.436 it's in meters here and uh, you could see the maximum going to 0.4.341 here Whereas the estimated one is minus 1.8 and 1.7 here, well within that two meter limit. The mean is approximately uh, 0.07 and the estimated is 0.18. The median is uh, 0.23 and 11. Standard deviation you could see range, okay. The estimated range, okay, measured was of the order of 8.7. Now here we are able to bring it to 3.55. So that is when you are having the sampling interval at two seconds. Now as we could have it and you could immediately see the improvement which is occurring. The, I, I'm taking one parameter here. First we'll take the minimum parameter. So from minus 1.8 it has come down to 1.4. Okay and uh, especially on the range which was about 3.556 it is now estimated range has become 3.1 and even the measured ranges have also come down okay and whereas moment you go to one tenth of it 0.1 seconds you could see because we had estimated to be as close to two meters we are able to get a range of the order of 2.5 so you could see to that extent the improvement which is occurring just by harnessing the sampling interval. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah. So now we take uh, the overall time period. We started with uh, 100 seconds. So what we do is as we trade in the time 
domain from 50 seconds to 500 seconds, we find we now come into that mean square error or measured position. And you could see over the time interval how much is the improvement which you find here in the measured position is going to about 0 0.05005 here, whereas the estimated one uh, is going to point. Yeah. 0 0.40, uh, 0 0.000028. So you could see how much the estimated position has improved in this overall situation. Next slide, please. So based on this, the position error statistics for a velocity deviation, uh, 62.57 greater than the specified value, so minimum, maximum, and all that, and then the measured in estimation, and you could see how this type of variation has occurred. Of course, we don't expect a very big velocity change. It's mostly, it's a, almost a straight line type of movement here. Next slide. Yeah. So um, then we look at true measured in estimation position for a velocity deviation greater than the modeled value here time and position and you could see how this whole thing is and it is again sampled for 100 seconds now we'll see progressively how the improvement occurs because we are expecting them to move in a straight line next next slide yeah it's once again similar to that position error which we saw okay and next one next slide Okay, so this is where the average position estimation and position measurement error, which we are able to say, okay, uh, the measured things are as far as you could see almost about 1.6 there, whereas the estimated one is very close, just of the order of 0.4 meters. Okay, so that is the order at which this whole thing is. Next, next slide. So now what we do is uh, we have the map of the museum with drop down menu for the choice of destination. So in the museum, because this is a typical map of what we have at Pondicherry Museum. So this is where the students had uh, taken a snapshot of it. And you could see how we can access. Next slide will show how we can access and go to the particular artifact using our PDA. Next one. You could see that this is the path taken by the tourist with his PDA and how he is able to go to the desired destination to see his particular artifact. And this is how the screenshot showing the display of path to destination. And they know exactly where this is located. Next. So now then we conclude that this project work, which is very simple, describe a method for user localization in a noisy indoor environment, such as a museum. And the method involves nothing more than use of a passive architecture using Bluetooth technology and a simplified set of formula based on RSSI based 2D triangulation of the user, a Kalman filter or position estimation. Next slide. Yeah, I think uh, that brings us uh, to the close of the first presentation. And uh, if there are any questions here, I will welcome from the audience. Before uh, I request the coordinator to please set up the second uh, set of slides, which is basically using the UWP. And if there are any questions on this presentation, I would like, uh, I could take up the answers or maybe at the end also. But please go ahead for the second presentation. No, no, slide. Don't go to UWB, go to slides. Yeah, that is.
Acha, while he's setting up, uh, I was uh, generally interested in the audience. Uh, now, we have done this using the Bluetooth. My request is uh, you could use a WLAN, Wi-Fi type of arrangement to do this. Okay, we could use uh, any other type of technique with which you're familiar. Uh, I like, uh, uh, of course, the subsequent uh, measurements, especially on the complicated, on the accurate ones, we are trying to use the UWP, which is a very accurate one. But uh, uh, we could, uh, you could experiment because I think Wi Fi is available in your campus at several places. So you can easily try out this very simple idea and then implement and you could see for yourself how comfortable it is to work with these systems. Can I get the first slide please? Yes sir, I put. And it has not come still. Are they visible, sir? No, no, not yet. So, they know that. No, not yet. But it will take some few minutes.
सर आ गया कि नहीं नहीं सर आया नहीं ओके सर दे आर डूइंग जस्ट मिनट सर ओके ओके Now that was the previous one. This is the previous one. We have to go to the next one. Professor Sharma. Ah yes, yes, this is the one. Just come now. Yeah. 
प्रोसेस शर्मा कैन आई स्टार्ट यस सर यस या थैंक यू या कंटिन्यूइंग विथ माय सेकंड प्रेजेंटेशन टुडे द आउटलाइन इज बेसिकली आई वुड टेक इट दिस वे would uh, start with the motivation the objective introduction and indoor positioning technologies many of these things have been discussed yesterday itself uh, i will take it uh, in a very scanty manner there but then concentrate why uwp as i was telling you uwp is an acronym standing for ultra wide band and why is it that we exploit uwp as an indoor positioning system uh, we have it, uh, it it to process some extremely good properties which can be reckoned for exploiting it in the indoor positioning system and then different positioning methods the toa estimation next slide please next slide yeah then the positioning estimation direct method objective kalman filter simulation results conclusion scope for further work and references right next slide next slide please next slide hello can we go to the next slide yes okay now this is the motivation uh, as i was telling you yesterday in emergency services which could include earthquakes train accidents gas explosions aircraft crashes where there is a major requirement to identify the presence of humans within the disaster zones and also to provide accurate positioning personal identification for possible humans overlaid under the debris so the second point is to provide navigational aids for rehab engineering with assistive technologies especially for the physically handicapped and impaired personnel okay the lot of assistive technologies where again you find the context of air playing a very big role next slide next slide please hello yes yeah so this is the major objective of the project as you could see here the main aim is to locate the user okay with an indoor uwb positioning system okay so we have the three access points which are indicated here and if you have to do it in three dimensional you would need four access points this is the uwb device which can be put on a mobile phone or pda or whatever type of uh, tablet or any type of uh, other device which you have okay so this can be put here uh, push this back into slide mode please put it back in the slide mode yeah thank you so go to the next part next slide so now we are getting into context and context aware about this we have uh, already discussed but uh, we got uh, these are the definitions which we have listed yesterday itself we have discussed in length go to the next slide yes so here 
uh, with this picture, uh, you would be able to get a much better uh, view of the context awareness. And this context characterizes the situation of an entity where we are looking at uh, three aspects of the context, maybe spatially, socially, information, okay, which is pertaining to where, who, and what. And what it does require is sensing and inference to determine the user's context. And you could see purpose of the use and what is it that he is carrying with him and where exactly we are able to push all this within this particular uh, region in which is of interest. He's looking at physical surroundings, social and cultural situation, location, the navigations. Next slide, please. So in the location-based services about which we talked about, it is basically answering and NBS exploits several technologies for knowing where a network user is geographically located. But it principally, LBS principally answers these three questions. Where am I? What's around me? How do I get there? So this is, these are the three major questions which have to be answered under LBS for us to take it. Next slide. So, uh, so you will find, uh, you just go to the previous slide. Is it possible? Otherwise, okay, I'll take it. Sorry. So basically, this is how the LBS is working. The actual mobile device position obtained from the positioning service. Mobile client sends the information request. Request is read, appropriate services activated. Additional information apart from search criteria queried. Navigation information obtained. Text lists are uh, map format presented. And this is how the typical LPS is made to position itself. Next slide. Go to the next slide. Hello? Go to the next slide, please. Sir, just a minute. Okay. No, no. It has gone to the other one. You have to go to slides two, not UW one. Below that. Or okay. slide two. Yeah, in that the fifth or sixth slide. 
Just see, sir. No, not yet. Moment it comes, I will tell you, sir. No, not yet. Did you sir? No. No, no. मधुरमा हो क्यों नहीं रहा यहाँ से हमारे यहाँ से नहीं नहीं पर वो एक वो क्यों नहीं हो रहा है चल क्यों नहीं रहा है लेकिन हाँ गए हम शेयर स्क्रीन पर नहीं शेयर वाले पर क्लिक करें या जहाँ से शेयर करना है नहीं जस्ट मेरे टाइम शेयर स्क्रीन पर है अभी शेयर स्क्रीन वाले पर अच्छा पहले पहले स्लाइड चला ले पहले Sir, there is some issue, so I will just restore it. Okay. Sir, no. No, this is the other presentation. Sir, this is the other presentation. Okay, I will start a second one, sir. Yeah. This is the one, sir? No, no, no. Yeah, this is the one. This is the one. Yeah, we can go to the sixth slide.
next come go to the next 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 yes yeah yeah uh, you can go to the next next after this yeah okay we'll start from here and uh, go to the previous slide previous slide previous slide please uh, yeah so now uh, this is very important uh, because this gives the complete picture and uh, because there may be a lot of uh, scholars uh, as well as students who are interested in different applications so this one central slide gives you the overall picture in which uh, you could zoom on take a particular area of interest let us look at navigation in navigation under navigation we have uh, indoor routing car park guidance traffic management directions under information this is important because there's a very strong it department in which uh, rajiv gandhi university is founded so under information you have a very nice application called the infotainment services travel and tourist guides travel planner mobile yellow pages shopping guides so immediately after this you could venture into taking up a lot of assignments for them then tracking especially both people elderly people as well as vehicle tracking as well as product tracking let's say from amazon or flipkart there is a parcel which is coming for you so the lot of new applications which are coming there and of course a, a area where all our young students enjoy most is in the gaming space on the gaming space we have mobile games and geocaching this is picking up in a big way on the hospital front especially under emergency we have emergency calls and automotive assistance on advertising we have banners and alert advertisement billing we could have and uh, especially this uh, road calling business and location sense to billing management again uh, which uh, department can take care of the facility management infrastructure customer relationship fleet management this is catching up in a big way especially today uh, you take a situation where we want uh, ripe mangoes to be delivered to say bopal market so we can have a very fine system exploiting the context aware system uh, along with gps and gis to really get the fleet in place environmental guidance security okay the police and ambulance people will be using it for all and of course on leisurely fund when they are looking at these two things next slide please so these are the indoor positioning technologies about which i have already told about discussed in length yesterday you go to the next slide yeah now we uh, zoom on to uwb which is ultra wide band and because that is going to be of a central interest and on which we want to do this very wonderful car parking application and uh, we can see more details about it what are its typical characteristics which we have on uwb it's got very wide bandwidth typically bandwidth in excess of 500 megahertz 500 megahertz bandwidth and very short pulses very narrow pulses and very important look at this third point it is carrier less transmission so all that interference which comes through that is completely getting eliminated there's a very big plus point coming in for exploiting uwb and the other great uh, capability which uwb has is able to penetrate through walls and ground so it is able to reach across unlike the infrared and other systems or let us say today when we are using 5g okay uh, which is basically going to exploit millimeter waves you will find it is not able to penetrate like this at this frequency you have to be able to do next slide so uh, when we are looking at this candidate system for indoor positioning uh, system we have to uh, you have to have the radio system 
bandwidth, it should be larger than 20% of its center frequency or at least greater than 500 megahertz. And the frequency range is typically from 3.1 to 10.6 gigahertz. The range is typically up to 10 meters, but it is extendable to 100 meters, provided you can uh, bring in that extra power which is required. But look at this, accuracy is in terms of centimeters. This is something which is something we are love to exploit and that is the reason why they are looking at this candidate system very strongly and people have already advocated for this car parking applications. Look at the data rate, very high data rates typically of the order of 500 megabits and it's got multifunctional communication standards and many other services other than location estimation can be clubbed together. Next slide, please. And uh, this is more about the UWB definition, how it is, uh, what it is, and all that. So I will skip this because this is all available in literature for you. Only thing we'll try to see how nicely we can exploit this. Next slide. So other advantages are the low power consumption, low cost, nearly all digital with minimal RF electronics. And exploited for communications in radar and under communications extremely high data rate in multi-user network applications and the great advantage which you see number two here is the relative humidity to multi-path cancellation effects as observed in mobile and in-building environments low interference to existing narrowband systems due to low power spectral density which the system affords next slide please so then with this background we are looking at its potential application under wireless communication it can be exploited in LAN and pan roadside info station we'll see a diagram of it short range radios military communication radar and sensing and already vehicular radar is doing ground penetrating radar is also having through wall imaging medical imaging surveillance location finding Okay, precision location. Now, one very particular point which brings to my mind, which is to be brought to the notice of all participants, is can GPS work within a room? I repeat, question I'm posing to the audience is can GPS work within a room? Can it work within museum? The normal GPS which we are talking about is the US controlled GPS system which is typically in that uh, 1.5 to 2, 2.2 gigahertz. So the question which is being posed is, can GPS work within the room? Okay, any answers from the audience? Okay, well, this is very important. You will find yes, the biggest limitation of GPS, which is a satellite phone system, can work only outside Outdoor, in outdoor systems, it works very well. In indoor systems, it works with a lot of error. So especially the US bone GPS system has a lot of error, but luckily for us, India has launched its own navigation satellites. Shortly, its services are going to be made available. Already we find uh, uh, a lot of cell phones uh, were exploiting, especially uh, the uh, new newer cell phones are trying to utilize this type of navigation ability which is available from the Indian satellites which is going to be there. So the moment that comes you will find a much better signal which is being afforded indoor. But on the US GPS system we find the system to be very very uh, uh, erroneous and it will not work well inside. So that is the reason why we opt for all these new techniques to help us out. Next slide, please. Yeah, so this is basically UWB for radar uh, applications. There are some extremely good uh, uh, points here and applications which can be exploited here and uh, which can be used for a lot of newer applications and you will find several of this type of products being exploited in uh, our automated vehicles okay uh, which are coming in 
very much in the next real especially uh, with the type of latencies which are required 5g communications are going to be coming up in the driverless car domain which is coming up but quite a few of them are the newer uh, cars are all being uh, provided with this type of UWB radars. Next slide. Yeah, on the networking front, uh, you see these are the type of applications which we see here coming up. And uh, uh, we find uh, it has got this wonderful ability to be integrated into automotive, in car services, and entertainment. And a very good application which we have is download driving directions from PDAs and laptops for use of onboard navigation using GPS. And another application which we see is download music and videos for passenger entertainment, which is infotainment. Next slide will show that. We'll go to next slide. Yeah. So this is basically uh, a vehicle which is moving on the road and there from infotain infotainment type of tower which can be also provided in a petrol bunk uh, type of situation you could have through this uwb all this uh, type of uh, newer uh, material entertainment material to be downloaded into a vehicle as it is passing through because of the range it is able to do short burst a very high data rate typically hundreds of megabits in very short time and messages could uh, this message could also contain as you're traversing especially in indian roads we have a lot of potholes and so many things so some of you students can collect all this information and provide it and then quickly access it uh, allow for emergency assistance assistance communication so all road condition construction weather advisories all can be taken next slide please yeah so here this is where i was telling you the infotainment services at a service station while you're filling up gas we could have from a uwb device all the latest videos and all the other type of entertainment so while pumping gas latest video and movie and other content could be purchased for download and viewed later at home or in the vehicle depending on the requirement so this is being exploited in a big way so we would request our it and uh, engineers at rajiv gandhi universities to exploit this type of an application next slide please yeah so as usual vehicle radar uh, they naturally will have collision avoidance and detection okay and this is uh, can be utilized for driver's aid and especially today with the uh, exploitation of the airbag uh, in the vehicles this can be found very useful and it also has the resolution to distinguish in our roads we have a lot of animals crossing so you will be able to get a lot of this type of information next slide yeah this is basically the road condition regular sensing you could see the potholes how much of problems we are creating okay and this information can be passed on from vehicle to vehicle also using the system next okay now we are looking at the baseband uwb how because we are going to exploit that in the uwb radar that's why we are trying to study a little bit about the details of this and how it is transmitted directly and what is important is it is working in baseband no carrier or center frequency and of course it requires wideband antennas and spectrum control difficult optimized frequency right across so that is something you have to be guarded against next slide please so this is the fcc mask for communication measurement which is normally overlaid on the between indoor and outdoor areas how it is put across and the type of uh, radiated power which is measured across the bandwidth next slide so with this background now 
we now go to compute the phase of UWB positioning system. So here again, we start with the algorithm. We start, listen for signals from access points. We do a TOA estimation here, then position estimation and reduce noise in measurements using Kalman filter, a little bit of which we have seen yesterday also. But we'll proceed from here ultimately to the TDOA system, which is a much more accurate system. Next slide. So these are the different positioning system which we have talked about. Next slide, please. Yeah, so this is what we have seen already. Next slide. Yeah, this is about TDOA. What is important is you could see the two hyperbolas which are intersecting at that particular point. So that is the one uh, depending on the timing of T1, T2 and T3, T2 on the access points from where they get all this information on which this particular technique is exploited. Next slide, please. Okay, so the TOA estimation here, what we do is sampling of the received signal of the energy detection. You have a man pass filter, a square law block, then the integration, and then we come into the domain of interest, depending on the sampling. Next slide. Yeah. So illustration of TOA estimation techniques based on energy samples. So you have got various methods to do this, noise only block, noise and energy blocks. And based on energy, this has been done. It's an energy sampling index on which this uh, various techniques, this is one of them. Next slide, next slide. Okay, so different, different techniques for TOA estimation, maximum energy selection, threshold comparison, ABS search back. And these are all the equations with which we have done this. Based on that, you'll see some of the graphs now. Next slide. Yeah, yeah. So on this position estimation, the practical scenario with 2D triangulation, as I told you, this is the general situation, okay, where the three circles don't intersect at a single point, but then we have three such points here, and your PDA is located within that, but where exactly it is, you will have to locate that is where we take recourse to Kalman filter and which operates within this region and zooms on to the exact location of the PDA. That is where. So if you have four access points, you would have the region to be of a larger interest. So that really explains. So you have to be very careful. This is a more generic situation which we have to use, especially when we want to have much accurate estimation both in 2D two dimension as well as three dimension assessment. Next slide please. So now we go to uh, improved methods by which this estimation is being done. And we have a direct method and we have one more method by which we would compare that. So these are the new equations which come out of that in Cartesian system and the range and reference nodes. These are the mathematics with which you are associating. Go to the next one. And this is the objective method because we'll be comparing the direct method to the objective method. And these are all the uh, DFP formula. Okay, uh, it's a very nice algorithm. More details will be explained when we go to the UWP section here. Okay, but this is the mathematics with which this whole thing has been put forth and through which you can very well sort of mentioned in the paper also for you, the research paper. Next slide, please. So then from here, we embrace the Kalman filter once again. Of course, we do the predictive Kalman filter. It's an optimal recursive data processing algorithm. And uh, it processes all available measurements regarding, regardless of the precision to estimate the current value of all the variables of interest. And all it needs is knowledge of the system measurement device dynamics, statistical description of system noise measurement errors, uncertainty in the dynamics model, and any available information about initial conditions of variables of interest. So with these three uh, important parameters, it is able to do the important prediction, which is very important in a very subtle and elegant way. Next slide, please. 
So this is the time update and the predictor update. So this is the two things which we need. We sort of harness these two information from which the prediction can take place. Next. So based on this now, we will now show the simulation results which we have got from this and then proceed from there to exploit that on the UWB application for car parking applications. Next. So this is the POA estimation absolute error class for different algorithms with respect to EV by N naught on the energy samples which are there. Okay. Next. And you could see the position estimation which you get out of this. Okay. And which we are able to get from both the points. And you could see the four access points where they're located and uh, uh, the direct method and the objective method, the objective method coming much closer to the required point of interest. Next. Uh, position estimation using the objective method here. That was the direct method. Here we have the objective method for a different set of samplings here. Next. So when we do the comparison of position estimation methods between the two, uh, between the direct method and the objective method, which is an iterative method, we can immediately see the RMS error, how much it has decreased between the direct method and the iterative method. Next slide, please. Okay. So uh, the observation interval, once again, we do uh, the sampling interval is 100 seconds and the sampling interval, uh, the me measurement duration is 100 seconds. The sampling interval is 2 seconds and we are doing the comparison between measured, original and estimated. And we go to the subsequent slides to see how the improvement occurs. Next slide, please. Yes, this is the position error which is there and the estimation error to be much lower than the position error, the position measurement error, sorry, the measurement and estimation. The estimation error is much lower than the measurement error. Next slide, please. And uh, now once we reduce the sampling interval by one tenth of it, you could see how much the estimated error also come down, okay. Next slide, where you do the comparison again. Yeah, you could see again the estimation error uh, coming down more closely to the original uh, type of requirement. Next slide. And we have gone to a sampling interval of 0.5 seconds and you could see a much more accurate result coming in. Next slide. So you could see how much, almost uh, between the true reading and the position error, the blue line indicates almost it is touching the true position. And in terms of uh, a tabular column estimate, you could see how that is. Next slide. So the observations which we made as we translate from a sampling interval of 2 seconds to 0.1 second, the maximum measurement error which you have uh, as you see here, and the minimum measurement error what is being shown here and especially the error estimation error in feed has come down as low as uh, maximum estimation to 0.71 and the minimum to minus 1.1 from the readings which you have shown as we translate in sampling. Next slide. So then we also translate this observation intervals from 50 seconds to 500 seconds and the maximum estimated error from 1.78 goes down to 0 0.0987. Okay. So that is the type of improvement which we get when we observe it over a much larger duration 
as well as the sampling interval getting constricted. Next. Next slide. Yeah. So, in conclusion, then we find the UWP based indoor positioning system is designed for a noisy indoor environment. The TO value is estimated by using different algorithms with performance compared. The MES SB. Now, the MES SB gives better performance. And uh, so, the position estimation by direct and objective methods. And we find objective method performance much better than the direct and culmin performance is analyzed and simulated for modeling a person moving in the indoor environment. Now we come to last slide in this particular phase one. Last slide, please. So now what we do is you modify the culmin filter and non-linearity, namely extended culmin filter, the uncentered culmin filter, and less number of sampling. And that can be designed and compared. No further. Okay. Next, we go to the next set of presentation, and that would basically be pertaining to the uh, UWP application for car parking. We we'll go to the next presentation, please. Okay, sir. I will start. Ah, this is over. Yes, sir. This is over. Yeah. Yeah. Now we go to that. First one, okay. that, uh, what you presented for UWB car parking. Okay, okay. Is it visible? Participants, whether the screen is visible? No, sir. No, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, you have to go to UWB one, sir. Previous one, UWB one. No, sir. That we have already seen. So this is the one. Huh? This is the one, sir. This is the one. 
Yeah, no, no, this is the one with the top slides. If you go to no, UWB one. No, sir, you just see. Ah, uh, just open it. I'll tell you. Yes, sir. This is the one. This is the one. This is the one. Okay. Yeah, then just, open it. Just, just you can go just two three slides and then you can make out. No, because this is showing because that that is the one with ultra wide band. No, no. Just see, sir. Because okay. that already we have seen. Because earlier you showed that before you came to this. Anyway, let's see. Otherwise, you'll have to revert that. I am thinking that UWB one is the one. No, that we have already covered. You have covered? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Fine. So this is the first slide. If you want, I can go fast and then you can make out. Yes, sir, this is. Remain. This is not completed. So. Huh? This is the one. This is the one only, sir. I think uh, the second one uh, we have taken. Uh, uh, yeah, this is the one we have finished. You have to go to. We have already completed. So you have to go to the first one. UWB one, no? That is the one we have not taken. No, sir. No. Just I will ask. Confirm with the participants. No. Just can you open that? That first uh, slide it will indicate that. The title. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. Ah, no, sir. This this is already presented. This is already presented. You go to the other one. This is what we presented.
Ah, uh, yes, this is the one, sir. Yes. Okay. Can we start, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, um, well, dear participants, we come to uh, the last presentation of uh, today's uh, webinar. Uh, it is titled as uh, Ultra Wide Band Localization Technique for Precision Automobile Parking System. And uh, in fact, this work uh, was uh, undertaken along with my MTech uh, student, uh, Mrs. Gerardine Mary. And uh, of course, uh, this was. Uh, this work uh, enabled her to get some excellent placements uh, later on. She is now faculty in VIT, doing extremely well. This work was very highly appreciated. And we were able to get a lot of good publications also. So go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so objectives are very clear, precise indoor localization in the mobile environment using ultra wideband technology. Here, we exploit TDOA schemes, okay? Because no more we want to keep that away from all of you. We have seen the great advantages it has, have, it has compared to TOA or RSSI system. And uh, this is how we are exploiting it. So the requirement here is to devise a scheme for implementation of the proposed system for precision automobile parking system where we are expecting the parking accuracy of the order of centimeters. Next slide. So, uh, of course, these are all the normal process which we have. We have a node in a wireless system involves collection of local location metrics from radio signals traveling between the target node and a number of reference nodes here. Now, in the proposed precision automobile parking system, the mobile station device from which a position is calculated is designated as a tag. Okay, now tag, which is only a transmitter, okay, and position fixed station called a node is a transceiver. So, this is how we distinguish. Okay, all the access points now are designated as nodes here, and uh, the tag is the transmitter, which we use. We use that technique to do this localization. Next slide. So here, uh, what is it that we are trying to do? This is the proposed automobile parking system. We want uh, your candidates, your uh, students and scholars to study this very effectively and come out with a very fine parking system for your own university. So this is implementable and you can see. So the free parking space is within 250 meters, so it can probably look at different type of scenarios depending on where it is, where exactly is the slot available with the help of all these type of stationary units which are put here with the type of capability of uh, tagging onto the particular slots where the vehicles can be parked. Next slide. Yeah, so in the proposed technology, we find UWB as large absolute bandwidth, hence has more accuracy. UWB pulse is very narrow, short, gives much less time for uncertainty. And this wonderful property of a decreased power spectral density offers less interference and low power consumption. And as usual, UWB signals have this great power to penetrate, wall penetrating capabilities. So we can exploit it for the situation. Next slide. So in the proposed TDOA localization technique, uh, we find the tag is only a transmitter and it is easy to make smaller, low power consumption. All processing takes place at the reference nodes only. Okay, So there's nothing to be associated with the tag here. Especially once it transmits the signal, no necessity for an absolute time reference, which was there in the earlier TOA based systems. An immunity to timing errors, any timing bias will be cancelled in the time difference operation. So that is also dispensed of it and a great advantage for our system. Yeah. 
next slide so the modules for the indian lo indoor localization system is you have a uwb signal of course we'll tell you how to generate that then you have a signal measurement technique then whether we are opting for toa tdoa estimation technique the positioning competition and then the coordinates so the project gets implemented in four modules first we have to do with the uwb signal generation then the tdoa estimation measurement position location estimation and the mean square error value computation next slide so this is the proposed indoor localization so when you have a diagram we are very clear as we are operating for 3d system we have four nodes here which are basically a combination of transmit receive whereas the tag is only a transmitter here which you see and then we have a location server here. so this is the overall positioning of the tdoa system here where from there now we will see its effective operation next slide so in the tdoa system we basically see the intersection of the two hyperbola hyperbola one which is basically coming from the d1 d2 uh, sort of constant whereas hyperbola 2 is for the d3 d2 constant here and where they intersect is the point of reference which is taken and we find that is being obtained very accurately and from which now we go to the next slide which will illustrate how we take it forward from there next slide please okay then on uwb signal generation uh, we find a gaussian pulse of point 0.5 nanosecond pulse width that exists in simulation as uh, low side low that is why we choose the gaussian pulse as the sine wave burst of point nanosecond pulse width is used one can increase the number of cycles in the sine wave burst and lower the side lobe level which forms the wavelet function so this is basically the choice of signal which is being used and why we are trying to opt for a sine wave burst signal is being put out very carefully here next slide next slide please yeah so here we try to compare the gaussian versus sine wave burst on wavelet okay we find v peak v rms and the crest factor here on gaussian we find v peak is 2 volts rms is 51 whereas sine wave burst it is 400 millivolts 20 and the crest factor v peak to v rms in gaussian it is 40 here it is 20 so with that type of comparison now next next slide we do the tdoa estimate what we find is we get uh, the two channels here the second channel where the delay is introduced okay and then we try to do the generalized cross correlation using the GC, gcc method and you use the integration and peak detection and the estimated delay which is there all this has been very well brought out in the research paper which has been sent across to you okay we request all students to go through it to get a very very good idea about this whole thing next so then the pre filters in the uh, generalized cross correlator are used to enhance the frequency bands where the signal is strong and attenuate bands where noise level is high. Uh, spectral estimation hints large delay variance. In uh, WD, the spectral estimation is avoided with the piece wavelet denoise technique. That's why we opt for this. Next slide. So we find wavelet is a desirable property in UWB signals and they share the common property of orthogonality and uh, separating multi-path signals from two or more sources to combat interference in wavelet analysis orthogonality is used to facilitate fast computation next slide okay and this is more about wavelets so we could go to the next slide please so now 
in position location estimation, similarly, direct method, objective method. So these are all the uh, equations, the nonlinear hyperbolic equations whose solution gives the 3D coordinates for the tag, transmitter side, okay? And uh, the decay distance, PDOA estimate at node K, what it is. Next slide. And here, this is where the algorithm is used in this new technique called Davidson Fletcher Powell algorithm, which I was talking to you earlier. So, here, DFP algorithm, which is an improved technique, derives an objective function FP based on the network topology and decreases the objective function to estimate position of the tag. And the 3D coordinates of the K node, all this are provided here. Next slide. Okay, so mean square error, okay, square of the distance between true mobile position and the estimated mobile position, and mathematically it is defined by this. And RMS is equal to square root of the mean square error. Next slide. So error function is defined by this function here, and the true position location of the mobile can then be obtained by finding the point XYZ that minimizes EXYZ. So use this technique and we are able to get these results. Next slide. So these are the simulation results. The simulation of a UWB signal is a Gaussian process, 0.5 nanosecond pulse width. Simulation of UWB signal is a sine wave burst of 0.5 nanosecond pulse width. Time delay estimation between two similar UWB film pulses, one delayed from the other. Next. So you could see the simulation results which have been obtained. The first derivative of the Gaussian pulse function here. Next, next slide. And uh, here, second derivative of the Gaussian pulse function here. Next. Simulation results with the delay with which they are being compared here now. Next. Next, next, next slide, please. Yeah. So now you could see the noisy signal and the actual signal, and how they have been superimposed simulation of the noisy signal, and how we use this filtering technique to remove this background noise. Next. Okay. So the denoise signal and the actual signal. How nicely now we are able to compare both this. Next. Okay, still further improvement. Next. And then with the delay. Okay, desired signal and the delayed signal. Next slide. Okay, so with this background, then we have gone about trying to do because. We have to do an actual measurement to verify for the car parking application. So these are all measurements which have been done, the pulse generator, amplifier, synthesizer, and a strip line antenna with which uh, this has been transmitted and the whole thing was received and this entire measurement was done. And in fact, this measurement, if I remember correct, was done in uh, Bell Bangalore with their R&D setup and from which a lot of these interesting results were obtained. Next. So these are Agilent and all this you could see the microstrip antenna, spectrum analyzer, all this with this with which this entire measurement took place. Next. So these are regulations which are there. Next. So UWB signal generation, you could see uh, pulse width, uh, 2.5, 1.4, 2, 4 nano, rise time, fall time, or spectral density, what it is, center frequency, and the bandwidth. So from the UWB point of view, these were the parameters of it. Next. So you could see this captured on a storage oscilloscope, uh, which was there with the Agilent, 
So this is the actual signal, QWP signal, which is generated, which has been captured in the lab, and these results have been shown here for you. Next. Continued again. Next. And UWP signal generation, the channel power and the power levels with uh, the snapshot obtained from the oscilloscope field. Next. Similarly, once again, we get it from the Agilent uh, measurement system. Next. Okay, the channel power, what it has been measured. Next. So, case one, target and reference nodes are closer to each other. Reference node I, J, K, J, I, where we have showed. Tag position where it is. EFP estimate, EFP algorithm, direct method, direct method. And you could see the result. Mean square error with DFP algorithm and mean square error with the direct method. You could see how much is the improvement which has come about. And from the graph again, you can see the result. Next slide. Uh, of course, when they have been brought closer, tag position, what it is. And again, you could see direct method, how much is the mean square error you get how much is the improvement you get using the DFP algorithm. Next. Okay, so all this have been put under case one position location estimation and you could see where exactly is the location here on the DFP algorithm and this thing very clearly pictures that. Next. On this system again, the estimation how it is and how the improvement has come about. Next, so comparing these two results, the mean square error, okay, between the direct method and the Fletcher Powell algorithm, you could see the drastic improvement in the case of location results, okay. So, with this result, we are encouraging now to go for the car parking application, okay. Go ahead, next. So, a scheme then is outlined to implement the proposed scheme for Christian automobile parking application, effective method for accurate TDOA estimation where the source signal is a pure sinusoid, is easier to generate as device, iterative nature of DFP algorithms is better position estimation of the tag compared to the direct method, increased density of the nodes gives lower mean square error, error value here. Okay, I think that comes to the conclusion. Can we have the reference? I think references are there. I think last slide. Yeah, these are the references. Okay, and this was the Knapp and Carter, the principal uh, paper which was referred here for this, and also uh, paper number two for TDOA with three bringing the wavelength noise. Next slide, please. I think that comes to the end. Yeah, some more references. Okay. Next slide. Yeah, that comes to the end. Yes, Professor Sharma. I think I've come to the end of my topic. Right? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now we can open up for some questions with the audience. I have more or less finished all this yes. and I sent you that paper yesterday of this UWB research paper i think you have passed it on to them the audience okay so they can go through it and of course my mail id is also there if there are any further questions they have but uh, from today's presentation yesterday's if there are some questions i would like to answer yeah i request all the participants they can have the discussion or they can ask any question any doubt yes sir it is open for all Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, can we use Kalman filter in navigation? Kalman filter? In navigation. Can we use Kalman filter in navigation? In uh, in uh, which one you are asking? Navigation, navigation, sir. Navigation, yes, yes, very much. Very much. Yes, sir. And uh, that is the one which allows you to, uh, from that point, to traverse to that point of interest. 
So you have entered a museum, and as you saw, from the entrance you have to go to you have to go to that particular location where the artifact or painting is. So once those coordinates are given through the Kalman filter, those inputs, it will allow you to navigate and bring you to that point. It helps okay, you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And it is applicable in different engineering realms, whether it is aerospace engineering, aeronautics engineering, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, wherever you want, you can utilize it. Different core engineering areas. It's a very, very robust algorithm, and we have two forms of it the unconstrained uh, Kalman and the constrained, where we can bring in the complications depending on the requirements. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, as a passing thought, uh, uh, because we always want to encourage our young scholars and uh, our uh, faculty and all that to think in a big way. Now, uh, I was looking at there are lovely trees uh, which are surrounding those beautiful lakes in Bhopal. And there may be some hill, hilly regions where somebody has done a lot of tree plantation. And suppose there are about uh, 200 plantations which have been made and with different varieties of trees. Can we use our context technique, a context our technique to zoom on and go to tree number 191, which has got a particular sampling of a teak, teak wood or whatever it is. Today, they want to use this technique to identify from that cluster, can I go and pinpoint this is the tree which has got that type of property. So people are trying to do that mapping using multi-dimensional scaling. I want all participants to look at this term called MDS, multi-dimensional scaling. Using multi-dimensional scaling in an open territory, are you able to pinpoint and look at your point of interest once you have mapped this under a general category. Because it is very difficult for you out of the lot of 200 trees to zoom on to that particular tree of your interest. So here then is a wonderful technique if you can put it under a multi-dimensional scaling requirement. The problem becomes much more important these days where uh, everybody is looking at uh, very good, uh, you know, uh, scent, uh, scent, uh, what we call that, uh, uh, you know, uh, different uh, flavors and, uh, you know, like the talcum powder comes with different flavors. You have flowers with different, uh, you know, sort of scents. So they want to identify plants like that. So they are wanting to look at different newer applications. So I would appeal to our young uh, researchers to look at that type of application in a very, very general sense. Okay, if you go to Nanitol, you have a lot of these trees. If you go to different uh, uh, cities, uh, different places, you have different, uh, the environment is different, but out of a lot of 200 or 300, you want to zoom in and point to some particular one which has got this flavor or this type of uh, attributes here then is a wonderful technique by which we can also look at that type of a newer application. Yeah, anyone else? And uh, uh, please uh, tell them not to hesitate if they have yeah, any yeah. questions yeah. on the mail, they can always send it to me. Okay. And as I said, uh, um, two areas which I want uh, Rajiv Gandhi University to really take up, sir, is uh, especially when they are victims buried under a debris, right? Okay, victims buried under a debris. Okay, you people can think of a beautiful mechanism by which to identify that and then on multi dimensional scaling in a very open area to look at how to identify uh, a particular tree or plant from a very, very general assortment, okay. 
So I think that brings an end to my yes. contact with lectures. Yes. Right? And I've sent all the necessary papers on this. And my only request is uh, uh, researchers can come out with still better ideas and take up a lot of newer techniques to do it. And from tomorrow onwards, I will get into software defined radio. And uh, I will send across my small presentation tomorrow. And then uh, we will continue that over the next two days and try to take it forward up to the fifth day. Okay, with a lot of newer applications. And of course, that comes more into our communication domain. This, of course, was a little new area for them. So I think our uh, students and faculty will be more comfortable with that area of software defined radio because it is having newer applications coming up in a big way and I will be talking on some of the newer applications which can be done. Yes sir, yes. So everything is with the new generation. Yeah. So they have to carry forward your knowledge for their yes. research and development. So I thank you again and uh, as no, none of the participants is asking, I think they are new or so they are thinking to start yeah. in this direction. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Namaste yeah. and uh, see you tomorrow again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you can leave, sir.